Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 3rd, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is the full moon this week that is getting a whole lot of love, a whole lot of attention, and there are good reasons for that. One of them is the fact that this full moon will be speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune. That is energy that is inspired. It is filled with faith, and it promises an element of magic to it. Profound resolutions and wonderful turnarounds can happen now, as well as meaningful transformations that feel inspired. But that isn't the only reason why this full moon is so special, this full moon happening in the sign of Scorpio. It is the first full moon that takes place in the sign of Taurus each year that is the mark of what is called the Visak celebration. And this is a festival, the most important festival in the Buddhist tradition. It marks the birth and the enlightenment of the Buddha. And it is this particular full moon happening on such a special day, speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune that does promise each of us that we will get our own glimpse into the enlightenment that calls us now. Now, what enlightenment is, I have been meditating on this, and I think it is a different thing for different people. But one thing we can say is, is that it is a place of peace. It is a place where we are able to recognize what is illusionary in our lives, recognize what it is that is going to have power and what it is that maybe we've given too much power to. When we're able to make that distinction, that is a powerful pathway to peace itself. Peace is an inner state of being okay right where you are today. It's an energetic space. It isn't something to intellectualize, much like the energy of Scorpio itself. Scorpio, as we know, is a deeply transformative energy. It has to do with rebirth. It is the alchemical process itself. Alchemy is the ancient philosophy and practice of turning lead into gold. It has been very popular at different phases in history. But in our modern times, and especially with the rise of archetypal psychology, we see this as a metaphor. This idea of taking what is within us that has felt burdensome, that has felt heavy, and turning it into a great treasure turning that very thing into great wealth. And I do believe that this is how the connection between Pluto and its rulership over Scorpio and this understanding of wealth being, yes, about actual prosperity and money, that can be one part of it, but it's so much more than that. It's about identifying what makes us authentically wealthy. Now, I say this with the full knowledge that right now there are a lot of people who are on some form of forced social isolation, uh, social distancing, and that has meant some disruption to income, some sense of awareness of where it is that they are perhaps not feeling very wealthy. And that can be painful. It can be pain that brings about those experiences. And so I want to acknowledge that first and foremost. But there are always ways in which we can, for a moment, take our attention to the place of acknowledgement, even if just for a moment, to see what it is that really matters, to see what it is that is at the core of how we define abundance itself. And I think many of us will find, and it has been proven, that once you have the basics met, your needs change. That is the philosophy behind Maslow's hierarchy, where he states our most immediate needs and what we believe them to be will evolve, it will change. And there is a foundation. We have certain basic needs like food and shelter. But once we've met that, then we are going to ascend his pyramid and we will find ourselves prioritizing the needs of relationships, of healthy connections, of companionship, of friendship, or of community, being dependent on each other, finding strength in numbers. 
And Maslow ascends at the top of his hierarchy of needs, we find self-actualization. And that is to feel creatively fulfilled. As I like to say, and I think I might have heard this on an Oprah talk show episode at some point in my youth, but when I hear these words, I hear them in her voice. So she might have been the one to say, to be well used for the things that you like about yourself. But as I was contemplating this full moon and in particular its connection that I sense to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I was thinking that even when we look at each one of those steps, they mean different things to different people. Like, yes, we have physiological needs like food and nourishment, but what makes for nourishment can vary in significant ways depending on your values, depending on uh, where you are socially, where you are in the world. And then once we ascend beyond that, we have safety needs. Well, what it means to be safe in the world or for ourselves, that can be something that is understood very differently depending on where you are on the planet. We have relationship needs as well, but what a healthy relationship is or any relationship is, is different to each of us. It can mean dramatically different things. And as much as we have esteem needs, we have the need to feel good about ourselves, to be pleased with ourselves, which is next up on that hierarchy of needs, what that takes for us to be okay with us, with ourselves, what it takes for us to be at peace with ourselves, again, can vary wildly. Yes, we can say it depends on your chart. Absolutely, your chart, your birth chart, your natal chart will give you a lot of insight into that as well. But it is deeply personal, but it is also within a given social context, cultural context, historical context that that's going to change. And then what it means to be well used for the things that you like about yourself. What does self-actualization actually mean? is going to be dramatically different from one person to the next. For one person, self-actualization means being a parent. Like they know on a soul level that is their pathway. For others, it may be that they have a feeling that that is not the pathway towards self-actualization for them. For me, I feel like I took huge steps towards self-actualization when Biggie came into my life. For some people, it is career, it is achievement, it is success, it is these things that define what it means to fully self-actualized, to feel creative and creatively fulfilled. But of course, not everyone sees ambition and success the same way. Success is highly personal. And what that means can vary dramatically depending on the person. And so we are at this full moon in Scorpio. It will perfect right around Thursday. And with this full moon in Scorpio, no less, it asks us to be honest. It asks us to be authentic. It asks us to get to the core of what our truth is. What is essential to us? What, when we move beyond the conditioning, the fear, if we sit with ourselves in stark honesty, looking at our truest motivations, what are our answers going to be on each step of the hierarchy? The sign of Scorpio with its energy of self-honesty, with its energy of transformation, that sense of being reborn, if you will, that is indicated by a Scorpio full moon. All of us in at least one area of life are going to feel ourselves not just regenerated, but transformed. And not just transformed, but redefining in important ways what at least one of those steps on Maslow's hierarchy is going to mean for us. In this way, this is a powerful time, a changeable time. Scorpio is an energy of truth that is getting to the core of what is and what really matters, it's seeing through illusions and finding security there. 
understanding the strength of what is beyond what otherwise is just illusionary or on the surface. Scorpio is a sign that has many different myths and uh, archetypes and symbolisms associated with it. We all know the scorpion in particular associated with it. It's the phoenix rising from the ashes, right? That sense of being reborn, that sense of regeneration that's indicated. As a side note, I wanted to wear something to honor uh, Mexico today because in my state this past week, we've had several uh, wildfires that have affected much of this region. And so I had gone online and I'd asked for prayers. I'd asked for magic. And it's been working. It has been working. There has been rain that has helped a lot. But that energy of cooling and calm that is so needed, the energy of transformation, or more than that, with this Scorpio full moon, and that symbolism of the phoenix rising from the ashes, the ashes come after the fire, and then the phoenix can rise. And so my hope is, and this shirt is kind of a reminder of, let's get to that place where we're ascending already, bringing calm to this region that means so much to me. This Scorpio full moon, trine Neptune, can bring in those healing waters wherever we need it, metaphorically, but literally as well. It can bring in a spiritual perspective, a faith-filled perspective. It can give us more reasons to have even more faith than we did before. This trine of Scorpio can bring with it inspiration and creativity and divinely inspired transformative art. In fact, I would say that if you are a creative person of any kind, if you feel yourself to be doing something where you are plugged into source in some way as part of what you do, whether it's sharing it or launching it or practicing it, would be a really good idea around this full moon. Because the energy is that powerful, it is that meaningful. Now, Mercury is standing across the sky from this full moon as well. And that can bring with it a need for either a more balanced perspective, a need to take other perspectives into consideration. It can sometimes indicate compromise as well. But the thing to be careful with, with Mercury standing across the sky in opposition to this full moon, is that we don't share so much that we lose the magic. We don't give it away so freely that there's no longer any there to actually direct where it is needed. To stay focused is part of the skill that needs to be cultivated now because our focus itself can become scattered. And so this gets back to what I was saying about what really matters. What is at the essence? What is at the core? Whether that's the core of what we really want, the core of what makes our lives successful, what makes our lives meaningful, what makes our lives prosperous. And chances are when we really get to the essence of the matter, the core of the matter, what really matters is not anything external or anything physical, not anything earthly necessarily, but it is the inner qualities that we hold those experiences that are forever a part of us, that have shaped us, that showed us something within ourselves that defined us in loving and wise terms. And it is this full moon that asks us to root ourselves in the truth of spirit, to root ourselves in the truth of faith and how healing that can be, how much magic that can unleash at a time when a lot of us really need it. We need to feel faith, a faith that works, a faith that we can feel in our fingertips and in our heart. And I actually believe that that is part of what this festival, this most important Buddhist festival of the year, speaks to as well, because this isn't a holiday that only speaks to the birth and the enlightenment of the Buddha. But there are 
many sects of Buddhism, many manifestations of this very rich tradition. And depending on the, the sect or the denomination or the manifestation of this faith, different parts of an understanding of the life, death, rebirth, enlightenment of the Buddha are emphasized in different ways. And so there are actually some traditions that use this full moon to emphasize the death and therefore ascendance of the Buddha. Because a part of enlightenment necessarily involved death. Enlightenment was the freedom from the life, death, rebirth cycle. That is how enlightenment was defined, was illustrated to us. And so it was his ability ultimately to escape that wheel of life, death, and rebirth that defined his enlightenment, his ability to see that as an illusion, as part of the earth school, as Gary Zukov calls it, in the seat of the soul. And whatever your tradition may be, whatever your faith may be, it is this full moon that in some way is going to give us that opportunity to glimpse what could be next, the next level of our lessons. What would happen if we got to the place where we mastered our most immediate lessons that were in front of us right now? If we were freed from the suffering that they were creating, what would be next in this life? Because to be free from the life, death, rebirth cycle doesn't necessarily mean to leave this incarnation. In fact, I think that if you are here now, if you are in this incarnation right now, it's because you have more to do in this lifetime. It really is that simple. You got more to do in this lifetime and perhaps a whole lot more to do in this lifetime. But it is the willingness to create emotional separation, to ease the emotional intensity of what it is that is uncertain because it is uncertainty itself that can facilitate suffering in us. To ease its emotional pull, the addiction of being in that place of fear and how it creates a momentum that takes us away from peace. Being willing to prioritize peace even in times of uncertainty, now that is the power promise now. And Scorpio is an energy of tremendous power, a deep inner reserve of strength that cannot be shaken. It goes beyond just faith. It is knowing to your core, in your blood and in your bones. There's more that you have to do in this lifetime right now. And this full moon can help you to glimpse that but also help you to find healthy detachment from where it is that maybe a lot of energy is going towards things that perhaps you don't have a lot of control over right now. It is serenity, ultimately, that so many of us crave. And yet there are these beautiful, brilliant, near magical moments where we get to glimpse it. And that glimpse is going to be on offer to so many of us right now with a little bit of willingness. We can catch it. And serenity has an addictive quality all its own, an elevated addictive quality that allows us to be so much more useful to ourselves and to others in the world, allows us to be truly meaningful agents of change and transformation and elevation in the best possible sense. Now, we do have other things happening this week as well. We will start the week with the first of three connections between Venus and Neptune. Now, I spoke all about this in the Venus Retrograde Special Horoscope. I know I've been talking about that a lot lately in the monthly horoscopes for, I think, every sign. I said, make sure you watch that. And I had linked to it. I'll link to it below here as well. In the Venus Retrograde Special Horoscope, I spoke about how the month of May has Venus and Neptune holding a conversation throughout the month, and it is one of tension. And I dived into it in a lot more detail in that video, but what I'm going to say for right now is that we will start the week with this energy of heightened expectation, heightened hope. 
but there isn't a lot of connection to reality with this. There's a lot of emotionality with this. And so either we're seeing things much better than they are, or maybe much more pessimistically than they deserve to be seen. Whatever transpires in your life as you are starting this week, know that you will understand it differently once we navigate, not just further into this month, but in the weeks ahead. Because this is one of the defining conversations as part of the larger Venus retrograde season. It's going to be twice in this month that Venus and Neptune will connect. Now, as we start this week, next week, Venus will go retrograde. The week after that, they will speak again. Intention in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. And then for a third and final time, once we navigate towards the middle of June. However, as part of this larger Venus retrograde season, whatever transpires now, we will see it differently at each one of those meetings. And so if your first impression, your first impulse as you're starting this week, if you're you know, not feeling very high or you know, very well, if you're feeling the pull of emotion or fear very strongly, it's okay. Just being able to acknowledge it brings acceptance. And just say, okay, I feel this way, all right. Perhaps what you might want to do, one thing that I like to do in my meditations and when I lead guided meditations, I always say, you know, any fear or anxieties, any thoughts about the past or the future, just imagine yourself putting them on a table and you know it's there. You can pick it up whenever you want. But for now and for this moment of meditation, we're just going to put it on a table and leave it there so that we can come back to the present moment. We can focus more on what we're doing right now here. And so that may be a practice that is useful to some people, especially as we start this week, especially considering that if you put it on the table, as we navigate this Venus retrograde season, you are going to see what is on that table differently. Your understanding of it, your perception of it is going to vary. Your own fears may be coloring what it is that you're perceiving in love in money, in self-worth, in self-love, in your ability to relax and enjoy, in terms of the fears that are going to motivate you and guide your life and where it is that forgiveness is long overdue, perhaps towards yourself. This is part of an ongoing lesson that we're all going through in unique ways, depending on your sign, your sun sign, or your rising sign. We're each experiencing this, Venus, and Neptune square in our own unique ways, but even within that, it will be varied, and our feelings will change. Mercury is also very active this week as well. I'm very excited about that because Mercury can bring clarity, especially with the connections that Mercury is making with a week like this. Mercury right now in the sign of Taurus on Monday is going to connect in the sky with the sun. Now, these two planets tend to move quite close together. Mercury's never more than about 45 degrees away or about a sign and a half away from uh, the sun. It's never more than two signs away from the sun. And so, because of that, they meet a few times a year. And this is one of those moments. It always brings with it a lighter perspective. It brings with it a change of mind or new ideas or thinking clearly. But it is as we navigate towards the end of the week on Thursday that Mercury will sextile Neptune. That is a conversation of harmony. And that is hope. That's what I see that as. Real reasons for hope. A conversation, a letter, a text message, a document, a, you know, filling out a document, submitting it, getting somebody on the phone, having that conversation. These are the types of things that can open hope to us. And it is at the very end of the week that Mercury will try and speak in supreme harmony with Pluto. And that is effective and decisive action. That is a conversation with potency that has the potential to transform our circumstances. That is knowing what form to submit, who to call, who to send the email to. That is sending an email or a letter or submitting that form that ends up being really effective and gets us to our aim. And it is early next week that Mercury will trine Jupiter. And that's blessings. That's good news all around. 
And so I do feel like in a more immediate way, in a more practical way, there's every reason, not only for hope, but to know that things can transform, profoundly transform, and for the better. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it's got to be the VSAC celebration. You know, I uh, was very recently a part of an online event. It's actually happening now. It was the preview to the uh, Astrology Rising, Costa Rica.com new paradigm event that's going to be happening all week. It's a huge astrology party that's happening online. So anyways, all of us astrologers got together. I told you about it a couple of weeks ago. We did this preview. It ended up being over two hours long where each of the astrologers told you what we were going to be talking about and teaching and what we were going to be doing as part of this very big party online. And my friend Christina Claudel was talking about this Scorpio full moon and how she's going to be leading an ancestral blessings uh, ceremony as part of one of the things that she'll be doing. All of us are doing multiple things. And that really inspired me to just hear her talking about that. It helped me to understand how sacred this full moon is. Every celestial event can be sacred and is sacred. Every celestial event has been gazed on and meditated by the ancients, has been understood as a spiritual omen, has motivated action and understanding and wisdom and love and clarity in some way or another. But when we have something like this, a truly celebrated, world-celebrated full moon, and how she connected it to ancestral blessings, I thought was very powerful. And so that is another reason why I love this full moon so much. Yes, it connects to a sacred celebration. The birth, the life, the death, the rebirth, the enlightenment of the Buddha. And the promise of freedom that he taught. And at the same time, though, there is a lot of power when we tap into our ancestry. But the wonderful thing is that, and I've really come to understand this, that to tap into the power of our ancestors doesn't mean that we have to live their lives, doesn't mean that we have to carry forward values of another time, of another space, of another context, but rather we can take their blessings and redefine them in a way that allows us to be effective here today in our modern world. We can elevate and evolve their teachings, the teachings of our ancestors. And whenever it is that you align with a system of thought, a philosophical school, even a practice, when you align with it, you become part of that lineage. Ancestry isn't just about blood. If you find yourself drawn to astrology, for example, you become part of the history of astrology. You are a part of that lineage. Every astrologer that ever was becomes your ancestor. So how are you now going to carry forward that wisdom? How are you going to make that wisdom your own? That is what we do as astrologers. And so with this Scorpio full moon, in some way you are calling forward and we are calling forward the blessings of our ancestors. But which ancestors? Well, that really is deeply about your own path. Whatever thought, whatever schools, whatever traditions, whatever wisdoms you have aligned with, they are now forever a part of you. And you now are given this wisdom and this knowledge to carry it forward. How are you going to change it and make it your own? Well, I do think that a Scorpio full moon, if any full moon, can help us to do just that. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. 
And Venus retrograde specials are already up for superstars. They're also available on my website for download at NadiaShaw.com, along with Saturn specials as well. Saturn is going to be doing some very interesting things, especially this year. So there's a lot to look forward to there and lots of big astrological events uh, still to come in 2020, if you can believe it. And I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. Check out my books if you are so inspired. Prayers to the Sky, it was a number one new release in New Age Astrology when it came out. And it is to cultivate a personal relationship with the cosmos. It's like astrological magic light. It's what I do and how I uh, like to engage the sky. So you get it right here in one book. The Body and the Cosmos is also a number one new release in New Age Astrology. Thank you so much for that. And this is me taking Plato's uh, ideas that he expresses in Timaeus about the cosmos and its connection to our physical and spiritual selves. And I connect it to an astrological sky. So that's what I do here. Uh, and thank you so much for all the wonderful energy it's gotten as well. There are meditations in here, one for each sign. And you can download and get those meditations on my website, nadiashaw.com as well. But you can get these books wherever books are sold. Astrology Realized was my first book. Uh, and the realized part, I mentioned Jeffrey Cornelius and his distinction between a speculative reading and a realized reading. That's where that, that word realized in the title comes from. And I explain it uh, in the introduction to the book. Advanced copies for The Universe is Wise and Loving, Volume 1, The Nodes of the Moon are now available on my website. That's for the advanced copies, which comes with over $200 worth of free gifts. And this book will be available for sale wherever books are sold in August, August 22nd. So the advanced copies are only on sale for another couple of weeks. Uh, I have been able to extend the advanced copy sale a little bit, but if you are so inspired, you can check that out on my website as well, nadiashaw.com or theuniverseiswiseandloving.com. Now I mentioned events, big event coming up this week, starting on Monday actually at astrologyrisingcostarica.com. That big event I was supposed to do in Costa Rica, well, it has moved online. Still some of the most incredible, brilliant astrologers in the world are participating. Kaipacha, is the organizer and he is going to be doing a whole lot for the event the great rick levine incredible legendary astrologer is going to be teaching along with maurice fernandez world-renowned evolutionary astrologer we've also got other incredible people i mentioned christina caudell uh, we've also got Ari Wolf, Timothy Horan, Julia Simas. So a really wonderful faculty is part of this huge online party. I'm going to be teaching fully four sessions, extended sessions, having a lot of fun right along with you guys. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So I look forward to sharing this very immersive now online experience with all of you out there. I've got other events as well. The Norwalk conference is now online also. Uh, again, world renowned uh, astrologers all together in one place online. You get access for two weeks to all the talks because there's so many different tracks going on simultaneously, but that's gonna be a lot of fun. And then I will also be teaching online with Astrology Toronto with the NCGR Stargazers group before coming back to Synchronicity University in three weeks time to teach Mars through the signs and houses. And then in June, I'll be teaching in a bunch of different places as well. So lots of online spaces and places for us to connect. And I really do look forward to it. Links are in the description below. And finally, I can look at your chart for you. You can order that. You can order a look at your natal chart delivered within hours through my partnership with Cosmogram. With Cosmogram, you go online, you give, you enter your birth information, you order a report, and then it is sent to you by email uh, within a few hours. And that report uh, is a written explanation of your natal chart that I have put together, the written explanations of the different things that are in your chart. So it's very exciting. It's wonderful to be a part of. I have loved my connection with Cosmogram and so many people have ordered this. Thank you so much. And 
I really do appreciate all the loving feedback that it has gotten, how valued it is by so many people out there. And my hope is when you get this computer generated report with things that and interpretations that I have written for you, um, that you value it and you treasure it for a very long time to come. So I hope you absolutely love it. And you can learn a lot more about that by clicking on the link in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I have new art in the background. You'll see me experiment with different things. I just feel, you know, Venus retrograde. Venus is also art as well. I'll be trying different things in my background right now. I really wanted an astronaut in the background. My friend uh, Amanda over at Astrology Hub, she got this new background with the phases of the moon behind her. And when I saw that, I said, you know what? I want an astronaut behind me. That's what I want overlooking me sitting on my shoulder. And so that's why I got this. And I kind of felt like if you look at it, it's like breathing life and energy into the stars, you know, bringing color. And when I look at this, I just feel like this is how I feel as an astrologer. Like this is kind of what I do metaphorically, of course, but this is how it feels like this is what I do. So I just love this and I love the vibrancy of it. And I just knew I needed an astronaut somewhere behind me looking out for me. And now I have that, but you'll see this background change quite a bit in the weeks ahead. I've got lots of plans for it. Uh, Venus retrograde, a good time to experiment, isn't it? Yeah. So you'll see some of that experimentation. We'll go through that together. And wherever you are in your life right now, please do send your calming, healing, loving energy to this land that I love so much. I have lived uh, in this region, in the Riviera Maya region, uh, in this state for over seven years now, almost seven and a half years. And when I came here, I knew I was home in a way that I had just never felt before. And uh, I came here on holiday at the end of 2012 and I moved here six weeks later and this has been home. This is my adopted country. Um, and to see my region having these, uh, these wildfires, it has been painful, it has been sad. And to know that there are so many of you out there who care about putting your love and energy where it is needed it has meant so much to me. So thank you for that. And uh, your prayers are magic. They really are. Your energy is a force and it can be a force for good in the world. So wherever you are right now, if you are so inspired, just send that burst of love and light and healing and cooling and vibrancy and protection for the natural world and for the people here, for the communities here. Um, to give that burst of energy, it would just mean so much. And thank you of all the things today. Thank you so much for that. And of course, thank you so much for being here and for watching. It truly does mean so much to me. Well, thank you again. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.